Welcome everybody to Mindful Social Marketing. This is a live stream where we talk about how mindfulness affects how we use social media and how it's affecting the world around us. And today I'm very honored to have this guest, Tara Muldoon from Project FU and Canada and the other coast, which is also nice because you know it's later there than it is here. Uh, Tara, why don't you let us know a little bit about yourself and about Project FU? Sure. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, the project that I run is based on forgiveness. It is supposed to be a little bit uh, provocative with the FU project, <laughs> uh, which, which definitely stands for forgive you or um, I forgive you. And we are just excited right now as a team, my entire team, because we are about to release our third book. So Yay. I know that you've been supporting us few years which has been incredible and and just you know like feeling right now and all conversations around forgiveness mm. you know it, it's really interesting you know I've, I have been watching what you've been doing for a long time and I think you know this new book and and please tell us the title of the book so I don't mangle it <laughs> absolutely I have it right here okay. it is called manhood it is chronicles of sex strength and identity so it's a compilation of about 45 men and young men and boys who told their stories about what forgiveness looks like in their lives mm. that's so important for men to understand that you know forgiveness is a part of their lives and yeah. and i think they get really sidetracked by the the idea of you know having to be strong and macho and tough and gosh i hope it's something that i can teach my son who right now still is a little reactive, you know, with things rather than thinking about letting it go and forgiving. How old is he? He's 16. Uh, yeah. Right. We have some 16 year olds in this book too. Oh, do you? Oh, that's cool. That'll be great inspiration. How did you end up with this book? This is your third book, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. So tell us, tell us the story of how you got there. Sure. Um, the first two books were well received by Canada in general, and we were excited about them. They were both compilations of stories where uh, we went around to speak with young, basically young people to talk about what forgiveness looked like in their lives uh, in different topics. The first one was violence. The second one was forgiveness and grief. And as we were talking to young people, we started to just see this platform exist for young men who wanted to tell their stories. Like we just saw young men who wanted to tell their stories, but didn't know where. Mm -hmm. And um, the more that we started to just work around this idea of like, what would it mean if we did this book on manhood? It just fell into place. One of the um, things that I've personally been doing is volunteering in jails in Canada. Mm -hmm. And the more, that we're, the more that I've been in there and talking to some of these young men, um, and this book is men of all ages, but the more I was speaking with men was, was just like how we'd never really get to hear the side of the story outside of, you know, their, the, the big major words are like, you know, they're trying to be manly or ego or uh, abuser or cheater or all, you know, all sorts of things that men can I, I identify with being called at some point in their life, I'm sure. Um, and just hearing the other side, which was honestly such a journey for me to even experience it. Mm. So let's talk about that for a minute. You know, as a woman who has been through a lot herself and, you know, someone who has, has actively forgiven. And, you know, how does, how does that feel to you when you hear these, these men saying that they've realized that and that, you know, they, they understand forgiveness. No, oh, we've got some lag time <laughs> or I'm fascinating one or the other. Can you hear me? Okay. We've had some technical me? challenges on this show, but. but... <laughs> okay, I'm here. I, I really, really wanted to make sure that technology was working for that answer because this journey, it was, uh, as you can, as you just identified, was a very personal one for me because I started the FU project being a survivor of rape. And we, this book started, the book process started about a year and a, a year and a half ago. And, uh, you know, knowing that I have, my own issues with men and the human race in general, like just because of, you know, trauma of experience, I, I was always wondering what would come up when you're working directly with yeah. people who are incarcerated for 
for abuse and, and trauma and, and even just people who, who identify as mistreating women. There's, there's some stories of honesty in this book about that. Um, in a good space and we were, I, was, I felt like I was really getting um, great honesty and transparency and keeping myself out of it until about um, March, March of this year. And I was out at uh, just a, a work event and I saw there, I ran into uh, the men who raped me and I was told that he wasn't in the country. So it changed from March until now being August has reshaped and redefined what these conversations with men look like to me. So up until March, I was, my heart was really just for telling the best stories. And now the other side is like, okay, so if I, I didn't talk to him when I saw him, but now there might be pieces that you could fill in the gaps for me so like re like changing the narrative for some of these conversations that I was having was was from less about you know like just the conversation of forgiveness to, to more about like why the why I wanted to know why as I was re-triggered in my own life I wanted to know the whys of why men were doing things or weren't doing things or you know just like where their heart was within the stories and I could I feel it think the pieces that were submitted after March when we worked on are might might be a little bit more intense for that reason because the journey mm. changed for me um which was a really power I, I know my team uh identified that too was like there was a lot more compassion and understanding and and uh, wanted to get more into some of the the pieces that we had in the later end of the book and which is just part of you know just being human um but also the just in general like I think what this book did teach me and it was something that I'd been struggling with for a long time was just the, the amazing, resilient and powerful men that we have in our world and getting to showcase that hands on as opposed to my story, which is I was raped by a man. And now it was speaking life into in, into men and, and how do we encourage stronger men and, and more men who can tell their own piece in, in truth. Mm. So uh, a lot of that. Mm. You know, so let's talk a little bit more about what that kind of forgiveness means, because, you know, I think, you know, I can't quote him exactly, but Desmond Tutu basically says that, you know, forgiving is, is not allowing someone to get away with what they did. It's not, you know, any of those things. It's a, it's a totally different thing. And I'd like to hear from you what you think forgiveness is. Yeah, I mean, this has been year six of doing programming around forgiveness, and my attitude and heart change all the time around what it what the definition of forgiveness is. Um, sometimes I do think that it's it's a a really hard and heart wrenching thing that we do to make ourselves move on. Sometimes I don't think it's the answer, which is a little difficult to say. And then sometimes I'm really inspired by the strength of our community and, and the people that, who told their stories that I'm I I think that it's the best thing in the world so just you know just like again the human journey of that process of forgiveness but what I do know like the facts of seeing so many stories are that the people who choose forgiveness ultimately end up at a place that is more peaceful than those who might still be carrying a lot of anger or aggression uh, and I, I see that day in and day out so I, you know I'm one of the few that gets to really experience and see that the benefits of forgiveness, all, I'm mm. always reminded. Um, but what forgiveness meant for me in that situation was, it was that he didn't get to have control over my life anymore. And I think that speaks to what Desmond Tutu was saying, is like, it's not really about the other person. It's not allowing them to get away with it. I mean, you know, you can imagine that when I started a project on forgiveness based around sexual trauma, uh, wasn't mm -hmm. always well received, not considered to be the best thing that you can do. Um, but at the time, I was 25 when this project started, and I didn't know what I was doing. I was holding a lot of anger. I found myself in some pretty abusive relationships, um, toxic friendships, and I was carrying so much shame and guilt that at the end of it, it was working through that project or that process of forgiveness that ultimately ended up creating this project, helping other people, and and allowing myself to live in a matter that I didn't think I deserved, which is in a healthy mm -hmm. life. Um, holding on to a lot of the trauma was just creating it was detrimental to me um but then and and you know for years this was my story I, I know you're familiar with it is it was my story of like I, I've forgiven him and I don't know what he's doing but I just wish him well and then the 
plot twist is again that I saw him in the winter time and it, it became very apparent to me that he was now a productive member of society and he's giving back and he is he seemed to have relationships that people enjoyed his presence there and that was was difficult for me for I had to work through that because in my head it was easy to be like well I forgive you but the context is that I never actually really see you and I can just imagine you're living a horrible life and like maybe you're just locked up somewhere or like maybe I don't know like you know maybe some bad things happen to you or like you can just when it's not when it wasn't in my regular life day to day I didn't know what you wrote your own story it was just kind of right right and then seeing him smiling I was like, oh dear. <laughs> okay. So, and then everything that I'd ever spoken about came face to face. Like, like I, it was, I had to, to figure it out. Like, what does this mean? You see him, he's happy. And uh, that was probably the most beautiful part of this whole forgiveness journey is like, I really, it was tested. My, what I've been preaching is, is being tested. And so in the most honest way, and uh, you know, the only thing that I can say is like, I don't want to be condemned by my worst mistake in life and I and like held against me and I really believe that at some point we have to let go for ourselves and by no way am I ever saying that rape is okay it's it messed me up for a very long time but I also needed to move on and I guess so did he and that's like a whole other problem and situation and, and story and dialogue that that came up this year but again like through this book and through everything that's been going on um like in the process of it just uh, like really really standing by what it is that I believe in is that like letting go was for me, not for him and excited about I, that's, it's, I, I can imagine what it must have been like to see him again and have to deal with that inside yourself because, you know, we forgive for ourselves and it's a lot easier as survivors when we go, okay, I don't have to see him. I can make up my own story and I can, you know, forgive without having to actually interact with them again, you know, and you kind of put them in a box and, and hope that they stay there and, and move on with your life because that's why we forgive because we, we forgive for ourselves, not for that person. It's, it's not really about them. It's about us. But when you come back and see them, then you really have to deal with it. And that that's an additional trauma for sure. And then the, the cool part is that because this project exists to explore those conversations and dialogues, we are able to do some really interesting projects and programming around that. So we've created this new project, mm. myself and my team, called Triggers. And it, and it really gets to the point of what does forgiveness look like in a trigger? What are, what are some healthy ways that you cope with that? Um, and this is just going to always be the journey of, I guess I make the world kind of journey with me. But so let's talk about that. Up, what are some things that, uh, you know, we can do to deal with that in a healthy manner? What are some steps that we can take? So, you know, I saw him this year at 31. That looked very different than when I had experienced trauma uh, years ago. And so this time I made the decision knowing what I know that I wasn't going to turn to <laughs> one of my favorite things in the world, which was, which was a glass of wine. Like I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to take it out and lash. I wasn't going to call people or, or men who've hurt me in the past and lash out. Like I made those decisions right away that I know how to deal with this better. So the things that I did do were uh, confide in my best friend immediately, went to her house, um, made sure the rest of that week that I wasn't making big decisions that I could really take in because the, the decisions I make are typically mm -hmm. based on programming and emotions and what's going on in the world I had to really take a step back and take that time for myself and it was the biggest thing that I that helped in that time was journaling and coloring because I had to get it out of my head that this exists this is real he's still real I don't know what he's done to other women um and so by everything in me was just about like getting my my own emotions out and dealing with it in a healthy manner and like the biggest thing that I've ever done that has helped me with with uh, talk to um, a therapist. I totally believe in a therapist. So it sat with me and debriefed with me. And um, I think even in the most difficult moments, it was understanding that retaliation, anger, sure. or any of the other sort of like I wanted nothing more than to punch him or call somebody to punch him or or act out in that way, right? Um, 
but but just knowing now what I what I do know is that that, that mm-hmm. yeah and, and you control that cycle I don't stop now so yeah yeah oh a million percent even when you think you don't you do yeah I think There's I think no that's you have to be yeah. back into yourself yeah and then I got a puppy I had mm-hmm. to, I got a puppy, the puppy. Was and and that's a great things, way to you know, do, you know, to, to treat yourself with something you can love. That totally makes sense. So yeah. let's talk yeah, a little definitely. bit about the book and the stories that are in there. Um, are they stories of transition for people? Is there a, the wide variety? Yes, there is some amazing um, moments yeah. captured in this book. I'll talk about a few of them if you're okay with that. There is, let's see, I'm so I'm guilty <laughs> of, of going through and being like, that's my favorite, but that's my favorite. They're just so good. Um, there's one piece in here that is a highlight for me personally. It's by a man named, named Dave McCallum. And he, I'm just going to pull it up here. He spoke about being wrong, his story is pretty public about being wrongfully mm-hmm. incarcerated for 29 years and recently being exonerated. And what does forgiveness look like when you just spent 29 years in incarcerated for something you didn't do? Um, his story is amazing because he's, he's so gracious and um, wise in where he mm-hmm. addresses his anger. So that's one of my favorites in the book. Um, and then there's another, another young man who I can't speak enough about. His name is Jalen and he is 20. He's studying to become a lawyer. And what he did was he he lived in a small town here in Ontario and experienced so much racism and was bullied and and just had a, a few rough years because of he, him living um, somewhere he was definitely like he said he just didn't fit in and um, and in in turn taking those experiences and now studying law wanting to do something about it but what forgiveness looked like in that like you know we, um, him even it was talking with him was interesting because even as a lawyer, you're not always taught that forgiveness is appropriate, right? So I was you know, going into speaking with him, I didn't know where he would fit in on this. And just being so wise for his age was like, you know, forgiveness is the only mm. way that I could really even just get to where I am now. And awesome. And then there's stories of um, men who are still incarcerated. There's a few profound ones of um, tackling fatherhood. Some mm. are very humorous on what it's like, you know, spend your first 24 hours as a father. Um, but all of them are just so different and so real. What was, was interesting about this is that we did an open call originally. Like, does any um, do any men in our community, in our world, want to talk with us and speak about what your story would look like in this book? And as a team, ahead of time, we decided what we wanted for content. It, it could take on a life of its own, but maybe we had some ideas and expectations. And uh, one of the one things that we didn't get was conversations and stories and experiences of unloved. So mm-hmm. that's like flagged for me. I think mm-hmm. we're gonna have to that is, that'd be really that interesting. Again. I think, you know, the stories yeah. that, that you're talking about, you know, I yeah. 29 years being incarcerated and what kind of person, gosh, what kind of person can do yeah. that? Can come out of, of jail and go, yeah, that's okay. I'm going to go on with my life. I'm not going to hang on to that. Oh my gosh, just so amazing. And his, um, so he was released just over a year ago and he actually just wow. gave, his his uh, partner just gave birth to a baby girl. So it was like, it's, it's, you know, being part of that story is he could have been angry and come out and done lots of stuff. Now he's having a baby girl and he, he chose to, to deal with that in a way that as well as he mm-hmm. could just continue with his life and grow and develop as a person. Obviously not the easiest thing that you would ever do at all. Definitely. But that is definitely. Me. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about um, I know that you also do some work with youth groups and that you have a speaking series uh, where people come together and, and talk about forgiveness and, and their issues. Um, can we talk a little bit about how those work? Sure. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the FU speaker series, which is a regular event that happens in Toronto. Um, it's something that is funded, which this is amazing to me, but it's funded by 
the um, Ontario government. The fact that they fund something called SU is awesome. Um, and this is a, it's a regular series that we have and it's people who are considered leaders in our community who come and speak about whatever that looks like, whatever forgiveness looks like. So we've had, we've had some remarkable speakers, some from who, who would touch on maybe they were bullied when they were younger, some on assault to um, what it's like living with HIV to homosexuality to just like anything that anything and everything we've had we've had the um with the ability to create those conversations wow. uh, we've had over 500 speakers we've done many events so we've had over 500 people tell their stories through our platform um and, and it's just so as you can imagine so raw just like the actual human experience of forgiveness so we don't encourage that you get up there and you know just because we're the forgiveness project that you'll create mm. something on forgiveness it's more about what was your experience like in that moment uh one of the bigger questions that we ask is what was your rock bottom and how did you move on from there so forgiveness is this it's about self-forgiveness as well not just forgiving, forgiving, forgiving others it's our yeah mm -hmm. yeah we work on we work within the context of four types of forgiveness so self-forgiveness forgiving others others forgiving you and then forgiveness of with God or your spiritual world or the world of what that looks like. Um, and I know that you're familiar with that from your work. Um, but just within those contexts, like what did that look like to forgive yourself? And just asking somebody who you think has it all together, asking that question about self-forgiveness and then they can't answer it because it's, they're emotional or they've, or they're, they, you know, like for whatever reason, they just haven't forgiven themselves. And that's always, yeah. The, when yeah. And I, I think, room, you know, it's so honest. sometimes easier to forgive others than it is to forgive ourselves because, you know, we think that in our own minds, not anybody else's, that we're infallible. <laughs> so, you know, we, there's nothing to forgive everybody else. And this, I see, you know, as my son develops and the testosterone kicks in, you see all of this, it's not me, it's them. And we see that in our culture. You know, it's not me, it's them that are wrong. It's them, it's them, it's them. When a lot of times it really is us. And it doesn't have to be a small thing. It can be, I mean, a big thing. It can be a small thing that kind of starts the ball rolling. So do you uh, see or have you learned from, from your travels um, ways that people stop that ball from rolling? and kind of reverse that inner feeling of not being able to forgive? We work within a, a framework that basically says hurt people hurt people. So we, it's, it's what we try to do in, is create a little bit of distance between right. whatever the act was in the person. So that's what we encourage for like for me i try not to take on the assault as a personal attack it was it was definitely his stuff and then so if i'm doing that for other people the bigger thing for us is like what do we do well, how then are we accountable to ourselves if we're if we're allowing that for other people what are we doing and um i'm trying it's the hardest battle of my life but i'm trying so hard to now create programming that doesn't make me a hypocrite but that also deals with self-forgiveness head on because you want to mm -hmm. be like when running a program like this, you have to be able to deal with your own stuff, right? And I'm trying, this is my journey. Um, but trying to create some programming now that deals with that. Um, but self forgiveness is, it's like, I just always try and when, like, I do, when we do um, written exercises around this on a board, we would always write, like, where create the cycle or the circle, and then it, where in there did things start to go wrong. So it's like, for me, I'm habitually late. I'm just like late and it, 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 I always see that it's, it, it, it throws off people's days. Like I'm five minutes late. I'm three minutes late for a phone call. And then it like, it throws off other people's days. And then people take that personal work. <laughs> we lost her again. It's just something that, and then I'm frustrated. And like, so I just, in the cycle of myself, it's like, if I was just better time management, it would save the way that we have to look at it is what is it that we can do not to like, instead of, the context of mm -hmm. like, you know I'm doing something wrong but like how do we just like make life easier for each other in ourselves so if I really you know could wake up six minutes earlier in my life then maybe I would have more stuff done in a day and I think that's just a real way of looking at it um and so then when we're working with with subjects that are a bit heavier um 
especially around relationships like toxic relationships is like yeah you you might not have always have you might be the victim right. or like you can play that role but also like at what point do you empower yourself to make a change and I think that's one of the things that we're really proud of doing is empowering each person to be able mm. to identify yeah yeah they I think so they can live a life too like it's also the life. ability to recognize that you need to forgive yourself a little that you need to cut yourself a little slack sometimes um you know in the smaller things like being late and I'm chronically late uh <laughs> it's it's hard oh, and you know I had a, a, a business partner gosh years ago who was yeah. always early for appointments and I would get there and he'd give me a dirty look and I'd go it's me you know this is who I am and he'd go yeah but that's not enough because you're disrespecting me and you're disrespecting the client and you need to get your shit together and I'm like okay, I'll try. And I try really hard. And now I'm, I'm a little better at it, but uh, it's, we all have things that, you know, maybe, maybe we need to look at a little more closely and look at why we're doing those things, you know, and it, give ourselves enough slack to step back and look at it and go, oh, okay, yeah. why am I late? Maybe I don't want to go to that meeting. <laughs> Like, what is it that's there that and I, I see it sometimes with, with some of my friends who are entrepreneurs and like you know if you should be excited mm. with that meeting you know that's an investor which you should maybe get there yeah early, and that, then why not that's part of the self-discovery part that I think is things. crucial to be able to forgive yourself is to really be able to look at yourself and go oh okay that's why I'm doing that um And I see, especially after people tell their stories through our platform, the one thing that, you know, I always want to follow mm -hmm. up with them on is, is, was there, was there any shame in this? And I think like, there's something that comes up a lot when people tell their stories through any sort of platform of like, I, okay, I did that. Now I'm possibly embarrassed or now I, I regret, sure. you know, like just anything from when you're that honest and transparent about what's, what's really happening in your life. And then so the other point that we're trying to, to make navigate now in the aftercare of talking to speakers is like maybe sometimes people are they feel like they can relate to you but also maybe people just don't really think about us the way that we think about ourselves and like maybe it's like so like I would be concerned you know I'm saying something wrong here and then people think that I'm not a good speaker and then but the reality is like maybe you actually just don't care that much or maybe you mm -hmm. you identify with what I'm you take from it what you are what you need and move on and that's something that we'll on right now with the speakers is like um you know we, like I said, we've had so many of them and, and so if they're in shame that's a bigger piece for me is like researching that what where did the shame come up what did you feel was it around other people what did that look sure. like and i'm sure that that's a theme you'll see come up this year yeah i, th I think that's a common refrain and you know i mean okay you've done something you're embarrassed by it and you know maybe it's something minor maybe it's something major but how long are you going to carry that around with you like an albatross you know there needs to be a way to resolve it and maybe it's saying you're sorry maybe it's correcting the issue maybe it's just going okay i made a mistake you know i think that there's right. there's a lot of ways for that to work um you know i think both of us went through the desmond tutu forgiveness challenge um which was pretty amazing because they really did give us ways to uh, understand um, different ways to forgive and different ways to look at forgiveness and, and how we live with that. Um, and by the way, if anybody's interested in that, uh, the project is still alive um, at the forgiveness challenge.com. And it's a project that, that Desmond Tutu and his team worked out. And it's, it's really cool because you can walk through steps on how to learn to forgive. And it's, it's incredibly powerful stuff. Um, it looks like we've lost Tara <laughs> for a while. She's been on her cell phone. And, you know, I think um, if you have any questions, please jump in with questions. Uh, we'd be happy to to answer those or I would until Tara comes back. But, um, you know, I, I really appreciate that you 
came for this broadcast because I think, you know, the power of forgiveness right now means a lot to me. And not just because I have lots of things to forgive myself, but, you know, we look at what's going on around the world. And I think a lot of the things that we're getting really angry about are things that maybe we need to let go because people disagree with us. People have other viewpoints. That doesn't make them entirely bad. It means that they have different viewpoints. And until we can see that and come forward and talk to people as human beings and not the enemy, we're not going to be able to solve all of this strife that we have. And I really hope that, you know, people will check out Tara's book and understand that there are ways to forgive. And uh, Amy says she's known Tara for a few years. FU is an incredible program series and so much more. She's an inspiring person and so glad to pop in and listen today. I think she's an incredibly inspiring person as well. And, and I hope that, uh, you know, because we didn't get enough time with her today that she'll come back. And also please, uh, you know, take a look at the books that she's written. I've put it in the, um, in the chat and I'll also put it on the website at mindfulsocialmarketing.com. And I hope that you'll go pre-order that sucker and, and read it and really see some of the ways that we can change the world just through the simple act of forgiving ourselves and others. And at this point, I'm going to end the broadcast. I don't think Tara's going to make it back, but I thank her again for being here. And I thank all of you for watching.